Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, <laughs> depending on where you're joining us from. My name is Emily Whitehouse. I'm Associate Director of Admissions for the MBA for Executives program. I work in admissions and I am joined by a star-studded cast today of some of our students who are just completing their first year uh, in the program. And so I'm so glad to have an opportunity to um, introduce them all to you. I'm going to have them do a self-introduction, but very quickly, I want to explain that over this very quick 45 minutes, it'll go by too fast, <laughs> our students will offer a take on their experiences throughout their first year in the program, and through them, you're going to learn about the mission, the curriculum, and also about the details of things like travel, work, and building a community at the School of Management. And there are just a few minutes at the end of the session where we'll be able to open it up to your questions. And you can go ahead and put your questions into the chat at any time, and we'll answer those at the end of our time together. So first of all, um, I'm going to ask the panels to introduce themselves, um, including their name, class year, area of focus, uh, location, work information, such as their title at work and the name of their organization. Um, and in the tradition of our Friday morning panel of peers, or POP sessions, as we call them, um, I ask that you, as you introduce, please tell us one thing that we wouldn't learn about you on, say, social media, LinkedIn, or maybe by Googling you. Um, I'll go ahead and have us start alphabetical by first name. Abhinav, you're up. Thanks, Emily, and I'm super excited to see all the participants in the uh, webinar, super excited for you. Uh, myself, Abhinav Jain, and I'm a Senior Director of Statistical Programming for Efficacy. We are a firm that work on clinical data analytics, and I've been in the healthcare cohort. One thing that you may not know about me Googling is I am an immigrant. I come from India. Uh, Yale is my first school in the US. And I worked on recently with the COVID pandemic, I was very fortunate enough to basically helping Pfizer with their vaccine and Paxlovid um, data development. All right, Over I'll go to ahead. you, Connor. <laughs> Thanks, Aminav. Hi, everyone. My name is Connor Cardillo. I am in the EMBA class of 2024. I am in the sustainability area of focus. I currently work with the U.S. Navy as an officer recruiter uh, for the tri-state area. I've been in the Navy for about 10 years um, and I've also worked with um, Amazon as an operations manager as well. Uh, one thing you wouldn't learn about me by Googling is that I have a identical twin brother, Casey, who is currently at medical school. All right, All right. I think Dara. All right, so I'm Dara King. Um, I am in the class of 2024 for Yale, and I welcome you all here. Um, I'm an OBGYN. I've been practicing for about 19 years. Right now, I'm a hospitalist where I am, um, I just do labor and delivery, ER, that kind of thing. I am in the healthcare area focus. And one thing you don't know about me is brunch is my love language. So, Tata. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is Tata Stepan. I'm uh, EMBA class of 2024. Um, I'm the founder and principal of Hyde Capital, which is an investment platform for real estate private debt strategy, predominantly backing developers uh, to reposition and develop uh, residential and commercial properties in California. Um, um, one thing that you wouldn't find about me on the internet is that I've practiced in uh, ballroom dancing for many years. Um, I, I don't do it now, but um, socially sometimes. <laughs> and um, that's the only interesting fact about me. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate all of you sharing about yourselves. And we're actually going to go ahead and kick off with our first question. We'll go to everyone. Um, and I'll start in reverse alpha order um, for answer. So Tatev, you'll be up. Um, so I want to first frame this question out to say that 
I want to hear a little bit about preparing and, um, and just kind of how you got yourselves ready for the MBA for Executives program. So let's start from the beginning. Please tell us about your experience considering and applying to programs and your decision to get your MBA at the Yale School of Management. And what were some of the things you may have felt a bit anxious or perhaps unsure about? I go first. Um, um, well, I MBA was not on my radar for a long time. Um, I felt like technically speaking, I was prepared with a CFA and um, a generic MBAs, which is what most schools are offering, was not of interest to me to dedicate that much, much, of, much money or time. Uh, however, when I stumbled upon the Yale um, asset management focus and the Yale investment model, and and and, and, the, and, and the two being so connected um, together, I just felt like that's an institution where I would like to be exposed to that thought leadership. So that was the that was really the point where I made the decision that this is a good fit because it is very much aligned with my career ambitions and, um, and uh, how I would scale my uh, platform in the future. Um, and, and Yale was my first choice and the only choice. Um, and I felt like in terms of preparing, um, I think I've been preparing for this all my life. Um, it, it, you cannot make up a story you cannot all of a sudden within a year reposition yourself um, I think it should show up uh, in terms of your track record of consistently uh, preparing and striving to reinvent yourself so I think that's definitely something that um, I felt will show up in my application process and and why I'm doing this uh, so it was an organic process for me and it happened very fast because I just happened to find something that was a perfect match for me well, um, mine is similar to Patip. Um, I, you know, I've been practicing medicine for a really long time and MBA was not on the radar. Uh, I was on LinkedIn and I wasn't really a LinkedIn person, but an article came across the Posen Commonwealth Fund, which was um a program that is through the MBA program and it's a scholarship. And so I, you know, it was really funny because I, every, I was like, mm, let me just look into it. So I looked into it and I'm like, mm, maybe I'll just apply. And then I applied and it, it just kind of was, as Tatu said, very organic. Um, and really as a physician, people are asking me like, what would you do with the MBA? Well, when you go through medical school, they don't teach you the business of medicine. They just really just teach you the science and all of that. And so I felt like I wanted to continue my work in health equity and it just fit into my mold. So as Tatsu said, I only applied to Yale. I didn't have anything else to compare it to. Um, and I really believed in our model, which is business and society. So it's not only how can you affect yourself in business, but how with this degree and with this knowledge, are you going to affect the community around you? And to me, that's a different mindset than pretty much any school I can think of. So um, how I prepared for it was that I just went, I jumped in. Like I just said, you know what, I'm doing it. I didn't feel like I had to do certain steps. Um, I am a lifelong learner. And so um, it was, it is a bit intimidating. And I think I shared this with some of my, my classmates before is that because I've been in medicine and I am in a class with people who are top of their game. I mean, you hear what Tata said, like this is what she's been preparing for her whole life. So I'm in a, in a class with people who are econ majors and finance and accounting and I just had biology and chemistry and so it was a little intimidating at first but um, my cohort and my classmates and my team and the admissions team and the faculty they really are very welcoming and they help you through that process so if you have some intimidation in the beginning or if it feels overwhelming we have a whole team that supports that. Yeah, so I think unlike Dar and Tatib, I kind of always knew that an MBA or an EMBA was kind of on my radar. It's something that I knew that I wanted to at least pursue. I was a I was a finance un, uh, undergrad major, 
And in my, in my Navy career, I was a logistics supply officer. So I had like that operations background and I knew over the years, um, you know, I had that professional background and I wanted to get back into the academic environment to kind of refine that, like that business acumen. So uh, back when I was applying for the EMBA programs, I was kind of looking at the different, you know, programs out there. Um, and back in, you know, the winter of 2021, I felt that from a personal professional standpoint, it was the right time to make that jump into the application process. And I think, you know, I was in between applying to the round two or round three, but I reached out to the admission staff at, at Yale and at the SOM, and they were so great in kind of providing me, you know, tips of how to kind of get my application in in like a reasonable time and put in the uh, best package I could possibly do. And I think that was like the big concern for me is that, you know, I didn't really want to rush the package. I wanted to make sure that my recommenders had enough time to put, you know, uh, a good recommendation forward. I wanted to make sure that I had enough time to take, in my case, I took the executive assessment. And so I ended up doing round three. I think one of the concerns about applying later is, you know, the class starts filling up. But my my suggestion is just, apply to at the time that is right for you and let your package kind of like speak for yourself. I think that's all you really can ask for. And, and then ultimately, you know, going into the interview process, I think one thing that's unique to at least the EMBA interview process is we do have a group uh, interview, which was something that was different uh, that I've never really experienced before, but it was kind of, it's, it's there to kind of stimulate a um, classroom environment and I think, you know, one thing that's unique about that is everyone has different perspectives. So I think if you're just true to yourself in that that um, group interview process, I think that's what the admission staff is looking for. Everyone has a, their unique path. Um, Dara is a doctor and, you know, we have a lot of doctors in our class. And I think those unique perspectives is kind of like what the admission staff is looking for in that, that group interview panel. So um, but that was kind of my experience throughout the process. My suggestion is to reach out to the admission staff. They are more than happy to kind of help you. And I can't say enough about like the guidance that they provided. Um, don't act like they're, 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 they're your friends in this process. So reach out to them. Um, they will guide you throughout the process. Thanks, Karna. I guess my friends have covered the entire spectrum from Tepes talking about preparing uh, throughout the career uh, and, and, and then basically to Connor talking about the admissions. I think a couple of things that I would like to mention is my journey in my career 17 years ago started as a programmer, as an individual contributor. And throughout my career spectrum, I sort of grown with evolution in terms of my, my roles and responsibilities. And I've been a tactical leader from a very long time. And, and as my trajectory is, is, is going forward, I wanted to be more like a strategic leader. And in that sense, I knew from a long time that, you know, this education is going to help me out to basically, you know, build up my profile, acquire skills in uh, finance and, and corporate governance and, 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 and be ready for a bigger role um, in, in the organization. And that's what brought me to Yale. Uh, in terms of preparation, I would say um, one thing that, that I think um, Dara also mentioned is, is once you know that you want to do this, just apply because that is one part that I really sort of think about myself is it took me three years to really uh, sort of uh, say that, oh, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, I should prepare more for my EA or GMAT and, 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 and that's sort of where I felt that I should have applied early. And, and yes, to Connor's point, I think the admissions office, your best friend, they are here to select you and not to eliminate you. So, so please approach them from that mindset and they will help you out at every step in thinking, in, 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 in sort of planning for your, your how to present best self of you in terms of even choosing the, the recommendations and things like that. I think getting advice from admissions is, is the best thing that you can do at this point of time. Thanks for the admissions plugs, everybody. I really appreciate that on my on my end. 
Um, and thank you for your very thorough and thoughtful answers there. I'm sure everyone watching really appreciates those. Uh, I'm going to next go into talking a little bit about what it takes to physically get here, the logistics of that. And so I'm going to throw this question to two of our further travelers, Tatev and Dara. Um, some of you will be traveling some distance to get to Evans Hall, uh, which is the home of Yale School of Management. So I'd love to hear about the logistics of both getting to New Haven, making time not only for class, but for getting here for the travel part. And how did you factor this into your decision to choose Yale SOM? And what's it really like? Maybe some challenges or some things that you were able to simplify that might otherwise seem difficult to, you know, someone kind of looking from a distance at what you're doing every other weekend. I guess let's start with Tatev. Um, thank you. So I'm traveling from Los Angeles on alternate weekends. Um, I guess it's a, it's a big commitment, um, just a flight then to JFK and another two and a half hours on the shuttle to New Haven. Um, it's um, it can be exhausting, but I think it's more about the mindset than than the actual you know uh, process of doing it. And um, in fact, I was very excited to get on a plane and and start traveling after COVID. So initially, it was just really fun. It still is fun, and I I use that time to just catch up on uh, you know reading. Uh, journals, uh, newspapers, it's almost like turned the, the whole flight into a mini office in a way. And, um, and now I got the process down and it's very efficient. Um, you know, once you figure out the, all the loopholes with the Amex credit card, it can, can really pay off. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the things that really helped me to uh, go through the security really fast and the lounges and everything. So it's, 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 uh, it's, it's become more efficient. And, um, and no, it absolutely did not deter me from making the decision to come to Yale. Um, again, this is an institution where I believe uh, that um, it's a place where students, uh, you know, you have to go to Yale rather than Yale coming to you. So that's sort of <laughs> where I am on, um, uh, on, on that uh, mutual relationship. Uh, and I have, I have, although the virtual option is available to a degree, um, I, I certainly uh, do not plan on taking that because I make this program a priority, a parallel priority to my business managers. Um, um, so in no way I'm willing to dilute the quality by not showing up, by not participating. So I take this super seriously and it, it has been a rewarding experience and I very much look forward to continuing the next year. Uh, well, I'm traveling from Maryland and although it's not super far, it's not super close. And um, in the beginning, well, I do I have flight benefits so it kind of worked that you know I would take the 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 um airplane but it was a really long travel so I would fly to Hartford because we couldn't fly directly into New Haven and then I would take Uber um so it really cancels the flight benefit because Uber was like 80 or $90. And then I would um, have to hustle when I come back because we get out of class at three on Saturday. And usually the last flight is at like five or 4.45. So literally we're like leaving, right? And we have a group, a travel group text where whoever in my class needed to get to Hartford, we would all kind of get in the same Uber and we would go. Um, and so, and we did that. We had people who might have rented a car, like, hey, I got a car this weekend if you need to go to Hartford. Um, but it was it was really stressful towards the end of um, the year. And so I decided to take the train, which just so you know, I'm not like a train person. Um, and it was, it's five hours, but when you think about how far I live from the airport, going through pre-check and TSA and all of that, it's really about the same and it was less expensive. And then like Tata said, I was able to study on the train. Um, we had two heavy classes towards the end of the semester. So I really was doing my macro and doing my SMF. 
sourcing and managing funds on the train and whatever homework I didn't get done was getting done on the train, which I think to Tata's point is that you don't want to be unprepared. You don't want to be able, you want to be able to communicate and participate in class. I've only used the virtual weekend one time because I had a speaking engagement at home and I could not fly out, but I've never done it any other time because I want to be present and I want to be fully immersed in the program. And so the travel did not deter me. And as Tata said, it was actually kind of exciting in the beginning, like, okay, I gotta go. And I have a husband and kids. So I'm like, mommy's leaving. <laughs> See you later. So for me, it was like a little bit of a getaway too. Um, but it is a part of the whole process because you wanna you wanna meet with your cohort. You want to be able to um, study with them and do all the things. So in person makes a big difference when we talk about an Ember program. Great, thank you so much, Dar. I really appreciate that. Um, so my next question, I'll, I'll get into it. So start by saying that we often hear students say that they learn just as much from their classmates as they do from the curriculum and their professors. So I'd love it uh, if Connor, you'd kick us off and then maybe Avana, um, Dara perhaps, um, please share who makes up this community for you and who are your classmates, your learning team, and what reflections epitomize your overall experience of the community and the culture? And what would you say is really the ethos of the Yale SOM MBA for Executives program. Yeah, absolutely. So I think Dara touched upon it in terms of the ethos here at SOM. Uh, and the slogan here is for business and society. And it's not just something that's like placard over the, the, the website or over at Evans Hall. It's actually something that they, you know, actually genuinely believe here. And it's what the professors believe. It's what the students believe. It's what the, everyone here is all about, you know, giving back, you know, to society and being part of the military, you know, community as part of the U.S. Navy. Uh, one of the things that was kind of of utmost priority when I was applying to programs here uh, through the various EMBA programs was to find a a community that had a tight knit uh, vet community. And here at Yale, uh, you know, I've had the opportunity to participate in various uh, events with the vet group. We actually just had a outing recently with the full-time uh, vets um, at, a, a, at a bar after class on Friday and being able to uh, share that camaraderie with them, be able to, uh, you know, explain of like what their future ambitions are and talk about that and talk about their experiences at, you know, Yale has been extremely invaluable. And I think that's something um, kind of that speaks to, you know, what SOM has to offer. I think people, um, generally, you know, feel the need to, you know, give back to society in some way, whether it be, you know, through government work, you know, federal, state, giving back to their local communities. Um, and so in our EMBA class, there are seven vets, you know, it's a small, tight-knit community, but it's something that really does, you know, resonate, you know, with me. We can, we all kind of go through sh similar shared experiences. And I think that's really, really helpful to have and, you know, I look forward to, you know, working with the, the vets group, the full-time students, you know, coming up in the second year to, through the various, um, you know, events, outings that were planned. So I think there's, you know, that's just one example that I have being, you know, part of the veteran community, but there's countless others that I'm sure, you know, Abhinav or Dara can explain um, that, you know, kind of, you know, work with their their experience. So, but that's what I, you know, you know, I think the vet group here is, you know, it's a very, very strong group. For sure. Thanks, Karna. So talking about the community part, uh, here at Yale, uh, as a student, we are not just learning from our professors, but we are also learning a lot from our classmates. Uh, most of our classes are very much dwelling around individual experiences, and we get a lot of air time where experts from their own industry or, 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 or my fellow students from their own companies talk about their experiences and their challenges. And, and so a lot of learning happened through each other as well. And particularly for me, I was so lucky to have my learning team um, in such a way that I have two RV vets who are very, very successful in their uh, professional careers right now. Uh, there is one neurologist, one radiologist working with me, one CPA, and 
Yale does this magic of bringing these people together and putting you through into a learning team, um, which sort of be your second home for one year because anything that you're going through in terms of you know how to sort of manage your academics, how to manage your 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 schedule, how to sort of take care of your learning, everything you can sort of you know discuss within the premise of your learning team and 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 that becomes a big source of learning and basically part of your reason behind academic success and, and and I was really lucky to have those people in my group so so for me that was an amazing thing that has happened in the last one year yeah I agree with Abhinav um I my I, I'm still trying to figure out how you all have put the learning teams together I know there's some special algorithms so when I graduate I'd love for you all to tell me um, but I really do think that they do a really good job with piecing people together. And for me, I had not had calculus since 1994. And I, one of our first classes was uh, probability and statistics. And I was like, oh my God, what am I doing? And there was a certain way that we would do with probability is that you would have to do your homework individually and then you would send it again with your learning team. And my scores from individual and the learning team were vastly different. Um, but I did extremely well in a class. And I know I only did well in a class because of my learning team. So you do lean on each other. There are some things, some courses that I was stronger in that I helped my team with or certain gifts and talents that other people have and we kind of feed into each other and you know people sometimes people aren't used to working in groups and that's okay because it is a maturation process so it doesn't click immediately or it may not click at all but you know that the work has to happen and so I think that that's just a separate skill outside of just having business school that you learn about growth and development personally so to me it was invaluable to have this learning team and your cohort and teachers and professors who are supportive of that. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And that actually segues us uh, pretty nicely into our next uh, kind of topic, which is around you know, a continued conversation around academics. So, of course, you've all just completed your first year in the Yale SOM Integrated Core Curriculum, particularly. And for our audience, um, just to briefly explain, these courses are taught from organizational stakeholder perspectives rather than by business function. And this is very core and unique to SOM is this integrated core curriculum. Um, so what maybe have been the biggest lessons learned through this curriculum? And I'll start off with Tatev first. Thank you. There's so many lessons learned. Um, it's every time you walk out of the classroom, you're like, wow, I did not think about this this way. Or what am I doing in my business that you know I could be doing differently? Um, um, I, I do love the stakeholder perspective um, and also the curriculum is very much interconnected. Um, for example, if you're um, studying in economics about the Nash equilibrium, you're gonna see that concept come up from a competitor. How do you make com competitive decisions um, um, uh, you know, in, in consideration of other players in the same market? Um, if you're studying about probability and statistics, um, you're going to use the probability calculations in investor returns. Um, so it's, uh, and, and those are happening in a, in a parallel fashion. So you get to see the same concept from multiple perspectives and who is using that and who are the decision makers. Um, and, and as well as the case studies. I mean, there's so many times I read a case study and I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm making the same exact mistake that this company made in this case study. So how do I avert that? Um, so it's been a phenomenal experience just to um, avail myself to all that knowledge and and um, and um, elevate my awareness. Um, like macro class was just another example of a phenomenal um, uh, example of what the, the Yale education is all about. Um, literally, I wish I took that class 20 years ago, <laughs> but it's never too late. Um, you know, sometimes you learn things organically, but when you see it, 
delivered in a very formal fashion by Yale economists. It's 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 just it couldn't get any better. Um, uh, so it's it, it's been a great journey, very transformational, and I do get to apply a lot of the stuff um, uh, on my job or thinking ahead uh, what things I can make to tweak and uh, and um, as I said, elevate my awareness to the next level. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Connor. Do you have any thoughts you'd like to share there? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in next. So I, I think, you know, after, after completing the first year, I think the core curriculum is a great balance between like the quant side of the house. We take, you know, our macroeconomics, their microeconomics, you take accounting, ops engine was, you know, a particular, you know, focus for me being that I, that's kind of like my life. And, um, but just having that ability to learn from an academic standpoint and apply those, you know, academic perspectives into your, your real life work, I think were extremely invaluable. But then on the other side, you have more of that qualitative focus in terms of some of the courses that are more soft skill, um, focused on leadership. We take a course called workforce, which is more of like a human resources related course, which I thought was an amazing course. We just finished up a course called state and society where we, learned how corporations and organizations navigate the regulations of government, whether it be federal, state, local, and then also the societal factors too, which I thought, you know, talking to the professor, I don't know if other, you know, universities offer something like that, but I think the balance between that is exactly kind of what I was looking for in a program. You know, obviously you want to get that quant focus, but you also want to round that off with some of like those leadership and those soft skills. And I think the core curriculum does a great job in doing that. Um, and I think when you kind of start the residency, you kind of get a taste of that. And I think you'll know what your, you guys will know what your, your strengths are, you know, whether it be the quant or the, the, the soft skill stuff. And so when you're studying for these, you'll know which courses you need to spend more time on. And as you kind of progress through the year and you kind of start your every other weekend course schedule, you'll kind of get into a battle rhythm of how you can uh, properly study, whether it be studying with your group, studying individually. We get issued these Microsoft tablets, which you can write on, um, or you can print out your, your notes and do it old school. That's what I do. And so I think as the time goes on, you'll kind of figure out the best way to attack these courses. But there are a ton of different resources out there that Yale has to offer. The professors are extremely willing to answer any emails, hop on Zoom calls, there's TA sessions after your class weekends. And then if needed, um, the program office can help set up, you know, a tutoring session if you need. So there's a wide range of, um, you know, resources out there to kind of guide you. And then, you know, in addition to that, you know, you're, you're able to take eventually, uh, you know, take courses outside of the SOM, um, you know, environment. You can take at different graduate courses as well. So you really can expand, you know, the boundaries of, um, your learning and kind of focus on some of the things that you're really interested in. Um, so I thought, you know, the first year, the core curriculum, you know, was extremely, uh, it did a good job of rounding everything out in terms of the quant and the qualitative work. Um, so I'm actually having the time of my life. And I know that sounds weird um, being in school, but it is such a great robust curriculum um, and it's very diverse in what you're learning like Connor said. Um, the power in politics versus you know micro or state and society as he said versus op engine you know you are really bridging right brain and life left brain together and to me is so inspiring and you know I, as Abhinav said he waited three years to apply and for me I was a little intimidated in the beginning because I had never seen half of, more than half of these classes before but being able to work with my learning team being able to see the fluidity of the program which that's important we learned one case in three different classes and one professor was like no it's it's really I teach it the best and so for us to, we talked about uber in like three different courses but that's the beauty of the program because now we're seeing it not only from a customer analysis, but also from an op engine analysis, also from these different things. And um, you're able to see things from a global 
perspective. And I am just excited about year two, actually, because year one was just so fulfilling. And we were, I was able to grow as a person, to grow as a student. And like I said, my secret sauce is I study well, but, you know, I was pushed to certain limits. And I think that that's what you want. You want to be challenged. You don't want to feel like it's something that's watered down. And I think that's what we need to also say about the Ember program. It's not watered down. It's like, real work. It's um, very challenging, but it's doable. And all four of us are from four different professions and we are all still thriving in where we are. So, you know, don't wait three years. Don't be intimidated. Just kind of just immerse yourself and, and have fun with it. And I think that's what we're doing. Oh, I love that advice, Dara. Amazing. And that segues us perfectly to our, our final question before we open it up uh, to Q&A. So folks, don't forget to use the chat uh, feature or Q&A um, to share with us any questions that you would like answered. We'll do our very best. Um, but I will ask as a final question to our panelists, we'll start with Abhinav, um, you know, and for, you know, for our audience of prospective students, what would you say is uh, one piece of advice or best practice or something you wish you knew earlier that you'd like to share with the audience that may help shape their experience as applicants and potential members of the Yale SOM community? I would not say anything new, but I would still repeat what our panelists have said before is please apply. I think that is the most important thing uh, to do and, and be in touch with the admissions office. I think these are the two best things that will help you out. And, and again, the community here is very engaging and, and it's gonna sort of you know help you out in whatever way that is sort of keeping you away from applying, be it looking at commute, be it coming back to the academics after a long time or looking at how does this education is going to help you in your career uh, situation. Um, there are answers to all the questions. Um, it's all up to you to get engaged uh, with and, and having conversations with us, basically. So I'll go next. I think my word of advice is like when you're um, coming to class on the weekends, I thought the class weekends were like the least stressful time because all your assignments are you know submitted by that time. And I think uh, my word of advice is just to be invested in interacting with your your fellow students or taking advantage on like the Friday evenings of, um, you know, going out and getting to know your your classmates or other students on, you know, a more personal level. There's only so many weekends that we're up in the New Haven community, and there are so many different activities that are offered, not just at SOM, but campus-wide different sporting events or different, you know, other activities. I just, at the end of April, they had a tour of the Beinecke Rare Book Library, you know, took advantage of that. And, you know, there's, it, it, I think that's something that's unique about the Yale community is that there, there is just so much for, you know, for everyone. And you just kind of have to find that and take advantage of it because those weekends go by really quick. And, um, you know, you have two short years and, you know, try to take up and take advantage of everything that Yale and the SOM, SOM community has to offer. So that would be my word of advice. Um, like Abhinav said, I won't repeat everything, but one thing I think we didn't touch on is family. And so, you know, being able to really have frank discussions with your family and what that commitment will look like, um, I think is important. I, like I said, I'm married, I have two children. And so um, that's a huge piece. I am well supported in that area, but uh, the admissions team, they're very happy to answer your questions that you have around family and commitment. And also when you come, they invite your family to come and they actually have a panel where the spouses can come and um, and talk about how to support the student. So I think that's important too, is to have a frank conversation with your family. Um, my advice is to be strategic in terms of what you're trying to accomplish with the program, how it fits your own needs, um, rather than simply doing it or dabbling in it. Um, it's, it's not a good idea. Um, 
Uh, I think there's so many resources available at Yale, so many opportunities to immerse yourself uh, beyond um, just school of management. Uh, you can even work with professors on research topics if that's of interest to you. Um, everybody's very welcoming. So I think maximizing your experience uh, would be very critical and um, something to think about um, as, an, you know, as you're considering this program. Wonderful, thank you so much. And uh, we've gotten a few questions in, in Q&A. And so a, a bunch of them are kind of saying the same thing, but in different ways. Um, and I think we have touched a little bit upon how uh, this program has been of benefit to the work that you're doing um, when you're not on campus um, in kind of your, your so-called day job. Um, but it would just be helpful if one or two of you wouldn't mind answering about you know, or maybe give some examples of how the program has been beneficial to your everyday work. And this person asked, you know, kind of compared to taking a year off to do a full-time MBA or to do an online MBA or something to that effect, um, how are you kind of balancing it with a demanding work schedule? And if you can work into your answer, you know, roughly how much you're studying, how many hours in a week, um, as long as it doesn't scare people off. <laughs> um. I can take it up basically in terms of uh, two parts to this. One is how I'm applying what I'm learning is I basically lead a large group of uh, data scientists and the courses, for example, workforce, when we look at how different cases are, are organized about the shape of the organization, how the org structure should look like, and what are different styles of managing a group, basically orienting in uh, the teams and looking at the individual competencies and things like that. Um, that content has really helped me out to lay out the plan for my team. Um, that is very direct application that I had from the learnings from the team's course or the workforce course, basically. Now, in terms of uh, talking about the preparation part, right, like how much do I have to devote time? I think Connor also alluded to that point was uh, being engaged. Basically, what this means is not falling behind in, in, in all your assignments, in your lectures and keep doing your, your what you're supposed to do. And every course is very organized in such a way that they will clearly tell you what the pre-work is, what the assignment is, when it is due. As long as you're following the schedule, um, you will be good. It takes some time initially to get into that rhythm of what your frequency is. Like some folks, for example, do it throughout the week. Some dedicate time over the weekend. Some, like for example, people who are commuting from long distance, they use their commute as a time for catching up on their assignments and their work. And so that is more situational in individual learning style, but, but developing a schedule for yourself helps. Uh, personally, for me, uh, I basically look at about 25 to 30 hours worth of work every week um, in terms of doing individual assignments, group assignments, and also going back to the lectures and reviewing that material so, as, so that I can be ready for the next week. Any other thoughts around that, folks? If not, I'm going to take us to our, this is our last minute of the webinar. Um, and I just got in what I thought was a great question. I thought this could be a good, like one word, um, if you could describe in one word, how doing this program has changed how you show up in your day job week to week. Um, what might that word be? Anyone want to take that one? Empowered. Energized. How is it structured? I would say um, I'm just present. Like, I just feel like I'm fully physically present in my job. And I take every skill that I learned in school and I put it into my job. And, and my chief has noticed it. She's mentioned it several times like okay Dara so I feel like I'm just present I love that that's so wonderful it's it's such a great thing and so 
Um, I just want to thank all of you for taking this time out of your very busy lives and busy schedules to be here with me today and with our audience and to thank our audience for tuning in today. Uh, of course, we'll be recording this panel as well uh, so everyone can get a chance to take some of your sage wisdom, hopefully to heart, um, and submit an application. Our application will go live in August and our first application deadline will be uh, sometime in late October. So uh, time to start thinking about it and very much looking forward to getting to know our new group of prospective students. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all, um, Abhinav, Connor, Dara, and Tatev in July, very soon. Looking forward. Take care all. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye, guys. Thanks, Emily. Thank Good luck, everyone. Bye.